Hello, I'm uh, Jakob Kopru and I work as a Nordic country councillor at the uh, World Bank. This week we've opened up the uh, spring meetings with social media and your questions. And you can join in via Facebook and Twitter. I'm here today with uh, Gunilla Karlsson, Minister, Minister for International Development Cooperation in Sweden. And Minister Karlsson, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. We have several questions from, uh, from the audience uh, on, the, on the web. One is from Poland and it's about how to maximize sustainable growth and the respective roles of the private sector and the government. What should the different parts do? Well, as I see it today, and that's globally, but also within countries, that we can never have enough resources and to mobilize the, the, the innovation, the new thinking, the jobs, if we are not working together with the private sector. There is the capacity to create wealth, but Equally, governments have to realize that and to create an enabling environment with good standards, with transparency, and also that we, as citizens, can hold governments accountable. accountable. So that's why I think this is a way to solve both poverty, but also, of course, to see that we can have sustainable development overall, with also the challenges that we see environmentally. Very good. And, and related to that, we've also had some questions about, about jobs. How can we make sure that economic growth provides jobs, that it creates more jobs, especially for women, especially for the youth? We have a huge youth population coming up. Uh, and what is the role of education in creating uh, that jobs? Market? I think it's very timely to, to remind, and I'm coming from Europe, that the growth, the global growth in the world has now been driven by the so-called developing countries. So that there is now a new opportunities and there are also markets developing in new areas, but also that people from uh, low-income countries also are designing and developing markets. The problem is how to make employment grow, how to be able to find jobs. And I think it's key to have the right education, but also to open up markets, because many markets are closed mm -hmm. and regulated too much. And that's why we also have to see that you have the opportunity for each and every individual to not only have its rights, but also to be able to participate. And here I think now with the urbanization, with globalization and also digitalization, there are a lot of new branches also to be opened up and new trends and new markets. But that means that we have to change the old economy to become much more modern and dynamic. And there, to be able to, employ, to be employed, you also have to see that you have good education and enough skills to be competitive. Exactly. And of course we have, uh, we have the women in, in Sweden, uh, you have uh, achieved uh, almost, at least, gender equality uh, and there's lots of women in the job market. How can that be rep replicated in, in other countries across the world and especially in the developing world? What, what is necessary to bring women into the job market? Because I think there is also talking about growth, the growth potential with also having women having equal rights and opportunities. Uh, so it's an economic loss if women are not there. But we are also seeing that there is much more also productivity and smart ways of thinking. Uh, so I, I see that there are so many needs to bringing in women on the labor market, but also so many advantages. And I think Sweden and many Nordic countries are the very good example of that, that it has really benefited our economy and also made our societies more child friendly. I can testify to that. I'm, I grew up in Norway. Um, climate change is something that you've been quite concerned with in your period as, as uh, minister. Uh, do you feel that uh, the European Union is uh, ambitious enough? And what is Sweden doing to address uh, climate change, both mitigation and adaptation? I think it's important as politicians to have visions. And we have decided in Sweden in 2050 we should have zero uh, net zero emissions of c carbon dioxide. And just to say that, we can also stir the uh, business environment and others to start to prepare for that. But of course, it doesn't make sense if not the rest of European Union are better in trading, in, 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 in emissions, having a carbon tax, but also to see how we work with energy efficiency, to have also good innovation and research in this and also to see how we can influence the rest of the world. Because I think there are too much of subsidies in fossil fuels. I think there are too much of the old technology. Uh, and how can that be changed? And if we don't do that more globally, it's very hard for single countries to do it alone. And that's why Sweden also committed to work within the European Union. But also now, ahead of Rio conference, uh, have a, a, I mean, a coalition of willings where actually countries, cities, and uh, also companies can go ahead and to be more 
may I say provocative and to show that there is also a good economic dividend in, in being very environmental friendly and to deal with the carbon dioxide. Exactly. Do you want to say a bit more about Rio plus 20 and what your expectations are and what well, Sweden here, would I'm, like I'm really happy to, to be here at the World Bank because uh, the World Bank now can provide with a lot of knowledge about what's happening and how can we measure and how can we have growth with better understanding about the economic environmental and social constraints. So the bank is very, very good place and we have now had a lot of discussions with the United Nations because UN is the host of this conference together with the Brazilians and I hope that we could have good outcome there. We have tangible results in deciding, for example, to start uh, phasing out uh, subsidizing of fossil fuels as one example, but there are many, many other things that should be t attached there, not at least to combat the poverty in the world. Exactly, and you're hosting a conference in Stockholm as well uh, next week, aren't you, on these uh, issues? Thank you, yes, we are. And this is about how can we live sustainable, I mean, sustainable lifestyles, how can we have better consumption, production and distribution to be more aware of about those things, but also to have the young people to enter, to have the young people's ideas about what will work for the future. And, and I'm optimistic, but I also sense that we have to act now because there is some urgency to really change the way we, we, we develop this world because the, the globe has fever exactly. and there are too many poor people out there that are excluded in globalization. Last question I wanted to ask you was, earlier this week you spoke at an Internet Freedom Forum. Why is the Minister of Development Cooperation internet, interested in Internet Freedom? Because I think that what we now see, the digitalization of the world, where people can be connected. And I think if you compare water with internet freedom, the access to water and the access to the internet is equally important. Both of those things, I mean, water and the internet can, can rock stones and change dictatorships. So it's also to promote freedom in the world. But it's also that the internet provides us with part of the new economy, where you also can have opportunities for, for new markets and new business patterns and you can also be more inclusive in the world because we see now that more and more people do have a mobile phone, more and more people can be connected and thereby take part in globalization. So I see an enormous power in this to empowering the people and that's why we need a free internet and we must secure the human rights and the right to expression and the right to assembly. And that's why we hold this conference on internet freedom and I truly believe in this and we also see, look, in Kenya and elsewhere, they are much more progressive in using their smartphones than we are in Norway and Sweden. That's true. Minister Carlson, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for everybody watching for joining World Bank Live.